İnşallah elhamdülillahi rabbil alamin. Ve'uzu billahi mineşşeytanirracim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Atiya Allah, atiya Rasul, onu lamri minkum. And always a reminder for myself. And abdukul ajisu daifu, miskinu, zalimu jahal. Remember for the grace of Allah that we're still in existence and took a path in which to be nothing. And the blessings of Rabbil Awwal and the holy month of Sayyidina Muhammad Wasallam's holy birth and this reality of the birth of all light and the light of all secrets and, and knowledges. We pray that Allah dress us and bless us from the immensities of these realities. And I think that we've spoken the last week or so as soon as we enter into the reality of Surat al Naml the 27th surah and the secrets of the Divine the Kingdom. And Allah gives us ta seen and swears by that reality and we've talked about the reality of ta and Tahir al-Hadi, the most purified representation of Allah the purified guide of Allah and the purity in which symbolized by fire and a burning bush, the bush in which Sayyidina Musa saw. So, and this is the eternal flame within the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad and the scene is the ilmu yaqeen, aynu yaqeen, haqqu yaqeen and the realities of the Divinely secrets. And all of mankind exists within a secret and insan is its center is the sirr and the seen and the secret. Our life is to uncover that secret and we described last night that the, the food of that reality in yaqeen, the knowledges of certainty and that each student is required to reach the knowledge of certainty. As they study from that knowledge, they consume and live that knowledge then ayn yaqeen in which they train to open their heart. So those knowledges become true for them, they're witnessing what the shaykh is speaking. As the shaykh is speaking many be, may be witnessing and seeing the entry of where Nabi Musa walked in Tuhrisini that he walked and saw a fire. And that is a, a portal from the heart of Prophet that's after we connect all the dots. The Qur'an describes it as that he came upon a burning bush and that he intended to get… Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream, every bit counts. As Salaamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. some news and knowledges and that he would bring back a fire for his community so that they could be guided. So means the immensity of, of that burning flame and that anyone who enters that flame never returns the same and whom are around it and within it Allah described they are blessed. Then the knowledge of awliya come and describe that flame is the heart of Prophet because Allah has no likeness. So only from this knowledge of realities they come back to describe the events of Holy Qur'an. They don't think Allah is a burning bush but the fire is symbolic of Allah's Divine the Presence and that can only be understood by the hadith of Prophet and the hadiths of Prophet Qalb al-Mu'min Baytullah and that the house of his believer 
is that the heart of his believer is the house of Allah So means that to come upon some representation of Allah it must be the house of his believer. Which believer and the only believer that Allah is concerned about is the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad So means a bit deep we have to ponder and think that as they're entering into the cave and this is the presence of Prophet ﷺ's holy heart, Allah is speaking. Because then who is in the heart of Prophet ﷺ? Where Allah says, I'm in the heart of my believer. So He came upon Allah's believer and as a result what He witnessed of that flame speaking to him, and Allah, that I am Allah So that can't be spoken too much more other than the person whom wishes to meditate and contemplate. That this is the portal for Bani Israel and the prophets of Bani Israel that they have a opportunity to be present in that flame. And Allah describing all around them and all who enter into it are blessed. And Sayyidina Musa salam describing, I'm going to take some fire back for guidance for my community and my family. So it means Hadrat and Nabi is immense, immense. They didn't know that then and this is the blessings of being from the nation of Sayyidina Muhammad They give us this identity or this reality so that we understand how much we don't appreciate what Allah has given to us. How much people want to complain for what they don't have of what they wanted and what they didn't receive or achieve and all of that is a drop in a waste, in a barrel of waste if you compare it to these haqqaiqs. What Allah did give, I don't think too many are truly thankful for. What Allah didn't give is what everybody's complaining about. And this is the dilemma for mankind. We've talked about it before but in the immensity of this month, the immensity of these realities, there's so much to be thankful for that Allah look what He gave us, that the prophets of a nation we're yearning for an audience into that portal and Allah gave to the nation of Sayyidina Muhammad Hadrat and Nabi at every opportunity, right? What's the most powerful opportunity? And Surat Al Nam describes whom are the people whom reach yaqeen, they do their salah and they give their zakah and those are the ones whom they have yaqeen. So every time you make salah you're in the Hadrat and Nabi because again people don't know where they're praying. To whom? Allah where? in the presence of Prophet That means this is immense. What other nations had to wait for a portal, for an opening? Allah gave us in our salah. Why? Because everybody comes to Allah with their Prophet. The words of our salah Allah is stressing for us that your salah is not you 
before Allah who are you? Your salah is always in the presence of your Imam is representing you. As soon as you make salah Prophet is in front of you. Every salah because you're saying in your tashahud, As Salaamu Alaika Yuhan Nabi So people don't even know what their salah is and who, who's present in their salah, where are you making salah? You understood that the salah is for Allah but where? And in whose presence? What the words teach us in whose presence? As salaamu alayhi ya nabi and you're giving your tashawud, you're giving your shahada, why? So that Prophet will accept that, purify that action and then present that salah to Allah But they don't want to go dirty in their salah especially if you're being taught it's, it's certainty and it's marifa that if every time you're praying why Allah has you washing when you're so distant from Allah <laughs> but yet closer than your jugular vein? It's to wash off your dirtiness because of the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad Means everything about our salah and the reality of that salah is drawing into the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad and it's in a world of light. Your physicality may be praying in any location on this earth or in space or wherever this body may be but the soul, as soon as you say, Allahu Akbar, your soul is present in that world of light in the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad And this is the world of light, alam al-arwah, in this realm of lights your physicality you have to think beyond the physicality. Where do I go when I say, Allahu Akbar? The prayer can't be taking place on this earth. As soon as you say, Allahu Akbar, the salah and the reality of salah for the nation of Sayyidina Muhammad Allah opened for them the most powerful portal. Why? Because immediately their souls are in the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad in a realm in which has no time. And Imam al-Mursaleen the one whom is always representing his nation and all nations. As soon as we're saying our salah and our namaz and, and, and takbirat, all of that is drawing our soul into the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad And that's why Allah is giving to us that this salah of yours, it has to be washed with zakah. That you have to give your zakat, you have to cleanse yourself, zaki is to be purified. This way of marifa is to rise above kindergarten. Kindergarten they don't know where they pray, they don't know how they pray, they don't know in whose presence they pray, it doesn't really matter. The way of marifa is to teach the servant is that be conscious, if it's Prophet that you love, keep clean. So with, with love they wash, they wash the places that people don't see to be clean in the presence of Prophet How could they think of going dirty into that reality? Whether through their physicality or through the soul, the one whom purifies his physicality and purifies his soul, then Allah gives to them, your formula requires zakah. Zaki means zakat, sadaqah, service, means that live a life of cleaning yourself. 
cleaning your inner reality, cleaning your outer reality so that your salah becomes real. And what Allah gave in this holy surah of, of reaching tahseen is that these are the people of yaqeen, that they pray and they pay and as a result they have immense yaqeen. And if they keep that presence with sincerity Allah make them more powerful than the nation of Bani Israel in which Sayyidina Musa described, I'm going into that flame so that I can bring back a fire for guidance for my nation. What about the nation that prays all their prayers in that presence? When you say, Salaamu Alaika Yuhan Nabi this is in the world of light. In that light of Prophet who's in the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad when Prophet is giving you back your salams? The same one who spoke to Nabi Musa and said, An Allah, An Allah. In the salah you're moving in that reality and Allah's fire, Allah's speech is in that heart. Allah begins to describe Prophet in that world of light by Hadith al-Qudsi. If Allah's the fire within his heart then Allah is describing in that Hadith al-Qudsi I am the seeing in which he sees. When you say, As Salaamu Alaykum Ya Nabi, means those whom are, are witnessing with their heart open, they can see Prophet. Now the Hadith al Qudsi talks to them and Allah, I am the eyes in which he sees. The seeing of his eyes, I am seeing. I'm the ears in which he's hearing you, the eyes in which he's seeing you, I am the tongue in which he speaks to you, I am the hands in which he touches to you, his feet, I am the feet in which he moves. So much so you're in the presence of my Rabbaniyoon and if you ask him he has power undoubtedly for kun fayakum and Allah's will moves to that reality. So means Hadrat al-Nabi is immense power, immense power. And if they want to draw near to Allah they have to come into that reality of Muhammadun Rasulullah and to understand what this flame of tahseen represents. And if Allah, Allah should throw that fire into the heart of the believer that's the very fire of Divinely Presence in which Prophet when he speaks to them is Allah's speech. And that when the nazar of Prophet come upon their souls it's the, the vision of Allah's lights and tajallis upon their soul. Means this is the immense ocean of tawheed and oneness. That as you draw into the reality of Prophet it's Allah's tajalli, the dressing the servant, blessing the servant. We pray that Allah give us an immense understanding of these lights and these realities and how to draw near to the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad in this world of malakut and the world of light. And don't let the limitations and ignorance of the world of form to distract us. And truly if we meditated because you're, you're accompanying a shaykh that is, is licensed for tafakkur and his knowledge is based on his license. Others don't have that license so they don't talk about it. But because this license is based on tafakkur, the knowledges are under the assumption that you are contemplating. And if you're not contemplating, you're not downloading. 
And if you're not downloading, you're merely entertaining yourself, no problem. And if you do download and you do your connection, you would have witnessed and understood the immensity of these realities. And then what Allah is dressing us with, what Allah is granting us of opportunities into this light and into this reality. There's no wealth that could be given for this, there's no possessions or, or, or dunya objects that could be in comparison to this. And many would give all the wealth of their dunya for one drop of that reality into the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad Because look to the stories of the Prophets of Bani Israel, means the best among them are the Nabi'een. And how much they yearn for a moment in that flame. How many times Sayyidina Musa went to that flame? One time. And called Kalimullah. What about awliya? That they're always in the presence of Hadrat and Nabi this is their station in their ranks. And when Prophet speaks to them, who's speaking to them? Is that very fire, that Divinely Reality. So means this is an immense reality, immense blessings from Allah If we achieve those and they bask in that reality, the Everything else that we ask for would diminish in importance. And this dunya, if it diminishes in this importance, you attain the wealth of akhirah. The one whom has the wealth of akhirah controls all the wealth of dunya. But the one whom has no wealth of akhirah holds within their hand something rotten that become a azab for them. Because Allah will question, where is that from? The attainment is to the attain the wealth of akhirah, the realities of Prophet to be in that presence of Sayyidina Muhammad to download and to be dressed by these realities, blessed by these realities. The one whom achieves those realities, they would understand the wealth that Allah has given to them. And they would feel ashamed to complain, even I have access to listen to it, Allah's giving me the wealth of akhirah. The ability to listen to haqqaiqs means Allah has given you a ticket into that audience. So means how could that compare to thinking I have difficulties of dunya? Only when they truly understand what Allah has given to them, they become the wealthy of paradise. They walk from the, the gold, the treasures and the rubies of akhirah. How could that one be in difficulty on dunya? They can't. But the difficulty of dunya is because they're not focusing on the akhirah. As much as you run for dunya, akhirah goes the other way. As much as they understood that this is a portal and there to stay in that portal, enter into its reality, attain the fire of that reality and take back home to their families its guidance and its light. As a result they would be like that flame, wherever they go blessed, all around them blessed. All in their hadra and their present, blessed. We pray that Allah grant us from these lights of ta'aseen, tilka ayat al Qur'an wa kitab al Mubin, bi hurmati Muhammad al Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al Fatiha. As Salaamu Alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Narjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah, if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below. The programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs 
that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.